Problem 15. When the seller decided to sponsor a Halloween party, they set two ticket prices. $10 for advance tickets and $15 for tickets at the door. So we're supposed to write a rule for income as a function of the member of, number of tickets sold in advance and tickets sold at the door. And then we're supposed to suppose that the event planners have a goal of $1,500 in ticket income and have sold 75 tickets in advance. How many tickets must be sold at the door in order to reach their income goal? So first for letter A, we need to go ahead and write our rule. Anytime it says to write something as a function of something else, whatever is listed first, that goes on one side of the equal sign, and then everything else goes on the other side of the equal sign. The information that we need is the ticket prices for this, $10 for advance, $15 at the door. And so that's how we create our rule. Income equals $10 times the amount of advance tickets plus $15 times the tickets at the door. On letter B, they give us some specific information to plug into our rule. They give us that the income is 1500 and that the number of advance tickets is 75. And so we'll replace the letter I and the letter A with those numbers and then use that equation to solve for D. And so we end up with a result of D equals 50. This means that they must sell 50 tickets at the door in order to meet their income goal of $1,500. Alright, letter C. If the income goal is set at $2,000, write an equation that can be used to answer the question, what are the possible combinations of tickets sold in advance and at the door that reach an exact income goal of $2,000? So it says we're writing an equation and our goal is 2000 nothing else about the problem has changed. We're still charging $10 in advance and $15 at the door. So the only thing that needs to change about our rule is we're going to replace the letter I with the number 2000 Then we're supposed to sketch a graph of this equation. We want to do that using the intercepts. So the first thing I ask myself is, if they sell no tickets in advance, then how many tickets at the door do they have to sell? That will end up giving me the y-intercept on my graph. So if they sell no advance tickets, that means we no longer need this part of the rule. So we'll take 2,000 divided by 15, and that gives us 133.3 door tickets. I know you can't really sell 0.3 of a door ticket, uh, but that still gives us a number that we can plot on our graph. Now we'll look at the same type of thing, but we're going to switch the number of tickets that we're looking at. Now we're going to say if they sell no door tickets, how many advance tickets do they need to sell? So if they're selling no door tickets, we don't need this part of our rule anymore. So we're left with 2,000 equals 10A. So we'll divide 2,000 by 10, and that gives us a result of 200 advance tickets. That gives us another point to plot on our graph. This will go on the axis that's labeled advance tickets, so it'll be our x-intercept. Now we can connect those two points, and that line shows all the possible combinations of advance and door tickets that would equal exactly $2,000 of income. On letter E, we're supposed to use shading to identify all possible solutions to the question, what are the possible combinations of tickets sold in advance and at the door? that exceed an income goal of 2000 So now instead of working with an equation, we're working with an inequality. We want to know how many pairs of those tickets will let us go beyond our goal of $2,000, so be greater than the goal of $2,000. I'm going to use a test point to figure out which side of that inequality, or which side of the line is the best side to shade to show the answer to the inequality. And whenever possible, I use the test point zero zero just because it's easy to plug in and so in my rule I replace the letter A with zero and the letter D with zero and that gives me this inequality as a result zero is greater than two thousand uh, which is false so I don't want to shade the side that has my test point I want to shade the other side of the line and that shaded area shows all possible combinations that would allow me to exceed the income goal of two thousand dollars Problem 16. Victor wants to buy 30 fruit trees to plant on some land he just bought. He wants to plant only apple and peach trees. Each apple tree costs $22. Each peach tree costs $28. He has $720 to spend and wants to use it all. 
Letter A says we need to write an equation that relates the cost of each tree to the total cash that Victor has to spend. So in this rule, we're focusing on the money information in the problem. And so back up where they, they give us all the information, we need to identify where the money information is. Apple trees are 22, peach trees are 28, and he's got a total of 720 to spend. So there's the rule that we can write to put all that information together using A to represent apple trees and P to represent peach trees. Now on letter B, it says write an equation that relates the number of each type of tree to total trees Victor wants to buy. So now we need to look at that problem and find the information that goes along with how many trees he's purchasing. Um, and the information that they give us for that is that he's buying 30 total trees. In this rule, we don't need to multiply anything to our variables because our variables by themselves represent how many trees that he's planting. So this would be our system of equations for this, for, uh, for this situation. Part C, we're supposed to use substitution or elimination in order to solve. Uh, either method would be convenient for this system. I'm going to go with substitution. I'm going to use my second rule and isolate A because the first step in substitution is to get a variable by itself. So I subtract P from both sides and that gives me A equals 30 minus P. Now what I want to do is take that equation and plug it into the other rule that I haven't messed with yet anywhere I see an A. So now I can rewrite the top rule replacing A with 30 minus P. Now I have an equation that has only one variable in it, the letter P, and so I can take whatever algebraic steps I need to in order to solve for P. Start by distributing the 22, then combine the like terms, subtract 660 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 6, and we end up with a result of P being equal to 10. And that's only half of our solution. We're supposed to solve for the number of peach trees and the number of apple trees. And so I want to take that value for P and plug it back into one of my rules in order to figure out uh, what the value for A is supposed to be. You might not have to show the work for that either. Knowing that Victor's buying 30 trees lets us conclude that if he's buying 10 peach trees, then that means he has to be buying 20 apple trees. But you can show that by easily using the second rule since that one's uh, less complicated than the top rule. Replacing the letter P with the number 10, and then subtracting that 10 from both sides to get A equals 20 as a result. And so for letter D, you're supposed to describe what your solution means in this situation. Victor bought 10 peach trees and 20 apple trees. You just need to make sure that you attach any units to your answer and that you explain what it means according to what was going on in the situation.